How's it going, mate? Oh, yeah, this is a factory built aircraft, okay. So, uh, we just received this one about a month, month and a half ago. Um, we've done all the test flying on it. Done the, when the aircraft comes from the factory, we literally just put the wings in, put the tail on, and then we get an independent level four guy, but he comes and he does the whole inspection. He does some of the installations himself. Check that everything is up to standard. Then we do dual inspections, and then we start flying the aircraft. So during the flying, of course, you know, when, they, when we fly it, we sometimes pick up, oh, here's something that's yeah. not perfect, there's something. So we don't want the client in the end, you know, after he gets his aircraft to have a couple of niggly things. So we found one or two things on the factory bolt aircraft that we are just fixing now. But this one is almost ready to, to do. Once we've done that 25 hours of flight testing, then we get a final C of A for the aircraft. Now, once you get your final C of A, the aircraft goes off to the client. And then, yeah, he can fly it for, normally, you know, your guarantee is 200, 200 hours or two years. So, in, if, you know, if it's fixed in that first 20 to 30 hours, it's, it's very rare that something pops up again. Lowing high wing. If you ask my wife, she's going to say lowing. If you ask me, I'm very, I'm sort of unbiased. I would, I would say that I think the, the high wing has got very definite advantages. For me, the first, the foremost is getting in and out of the aircraft is yep. easier. Getting in and out of the back is a lot easier. And the back space generally is a lot better for the high wing. Yep. Slightly slower, three to five knots, maybe. Um, which one flies the, the nicest? I sort of am the low wing. Uh, it feels a little bit more like a, I would say that's more of a sports car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, whereas the high wing is more your, your like your, 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 your SUV, yeah, you know, your yeah, Land Cruiser, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But generally, the performance is very similar. Uh, and you'll feel today, I mean, performance similar, flies very similar. In terms of the operating cost, now that is, I think that's the one thing where I always feel that sling is really a step above the rest because your maintenance cost is so much lower yep. than a comparable GA aircraft. And I'm not going to say which aircraft, but I mean, there's a lot of good, very good GA aircraft out there that's fantastic to fly, but very expensive to maintain. I used to have a Cessna 182, loved it, absolutely fantastic aircraft. But boy, when you take it in for a service, yeah. <laughs> that's when you start paying. And I always say to the guys, you know, buying the aircraft is but the first step. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's one of the costs. Yeah. But now you're married to that aircraft for another 20 or what odd years. That's when the marriage either going to be expensive <laughs> or not so expensive. And yes, I, I think with your experimental aircraft, that is just way cheaper. There is just no comparison. I mean, you can just start with a spark plug. A Rotax spark plug is $35. Yeah. A GA spark plug is $85 to $100 a spark plug. You've got eight. With a GA aircraft of similar kind, you need 12. Yeah. You know, and that's it. And so I would say your comparable operational cost, about 25% per cost of a GA aircraft. Rotax, do you do you, how do you rate the engine? I come from the GA world, I had a Cessna 182, but the only and ever engine out I ever here had was on a four, on, was on a four cylinder Piper. And it was just one of those things. It was an engine issue and I had to land on a road. That was the only ever engine out I had. After my sort of GA life, I spent about 2000 hours behind Rotax engines. And I can tell you, they're a fantastic, absolutely safe engine very, very uh, 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 economically a fantastic engine to operate, very reliable. Everything you, yeah. you check out, I've got them. You know, there's a lot of ticks. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you, it just ticks a lot of boxes. I didn't see any negative. Yeah, about. and especially now with the new 916 and the 915 engines, because of a fuel injection, on the 916 engine, you can expect to set at 80% power, which is sort of high up there, yeah. at 5,300, 5,400 RPMs on the engine, Hmm. And you're going to see a fuel burn of about 25 to 26 liters per hour. Yeah. Now compare that with my six cylinder Lycoming that burns 48 liters per hour, sort of standard. So again, it's almost 
half just a fuel burn. Yeah. So they can run on the mo gas, they can run on uh, F gas. So wherever you can find fuel, fuel. that's the fuel that you yeah. put in. Just a little bit of background on Sling. Sling started in 2006. When they bought the prototype, which was a Sling 2, and then they decided, well, let's see how good this aircraft is and flew around the world. Uh, you must have a lot of faith. <laughs> so they flew around the world and they decided, well, it's such a good little aircraft, let's make a factory out of it. So around about 2009, they started a factory and now they built over a thousand aircraft, which has been distributed worldwide. So lots of sling twos around. In Australia, we are about 140 slings plus that we have sold and distributed here. So you can either have it as what we call a slow bolt kit. So you buy the kit and it comes in the IKEA flat pack. <laughs> it's, it's easier to assemble than IKEA. <laughs> I think, I think. Anyways, yeah. it, it comes in a flat pack. Yep. And you've got instructional manuals, you've got me on a phone, you've got the, the, the engineering department at Schling to all give you support. So there's really, really good support generally. And I mean, we've built a bunch of them, so you know we can really help you. That's your flat pack build. That takes the longest expect on a sling four to spend about 1200 hours to build one then you've got your quick bolt option now a quick bolt option is the factory in essence has built most of the major components fuselage is built wings are built so your structural components are done before they assemble anything it's been elodyned before it's riveted together so yep. it means very good uh, corrosion protection that is a quick build option then you get the factory option so now you can go and you can buy a factory built aircraft because it's an experimental aircraft, it can only be registered in one category if you look at the CASA website. It is the Experimental Exhibition category. Now, the Experimental Exhibition category come with certain limitations. Limitations being you can use the aircraft for upkeeping your own uh, uh, um, uh, currency. However, the aircraft has to be also used for demonstration flights, for going to fly-ins. So it's basically to exhibit and to, to properly showcase the aircraft's capabilities. Okay, so you as the owner has got the responsibility to, 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 to play within that framework of where you may operate it. Then you get the last option, which is unfortunately the most expensive option. But that's the option that we call the build assist option. Now, build assist, in essence, you get a factory built aircraft, in my view, as good, if not better than a factory built aircraft. That's number one. Number two, you are part of a build process. Because you're part of a build process, you can now legally maintain your aircraft. However, to qualify to maintain your aircraft, you have to do a four day course with Sport Aircraft SAAA and really it's a more about it's not about how to maintain your aircraft it's more about how to do the paperwork yeah. it's, it's, but so that you understand the process behind the paperwork um, then just back to the build what qualifies you as the builder we involve you in all whether we build a structure like an aileron a flap or a horizontal stabilizer whether we build one two or four seats you will so you'll be part of a build of so building structures. The second thing you'll be involved with is all the electrics and the avionics. Now that's the sort of proportion where people where the wheels come off. Yep. Because it can be very complicated, especially with all the garment stuff. But you know, some people, electricians, electronic guys, engineers, it's easy for them. But once you understand the architecture, but that is where you're also gonna be. And we explain it to you. So that if you have a problem in Alice Springs, at least you can do some of the fault finding yeah, and see yeah. if you can. Because, I mean, you've got a pretty much intimate knowledge of aircraft. Then the third, and to me, probably the two most important areas is when you do your firewall forward and engine installation and the complete fuel system, plus all the engine and the flight controls. Because that, in essence, is what makes that aircraft fly. The rest of it is... Is superficial. is superficial. I mean, really, as if the engine works, the controls work, and the prop is good, and your fuel is running, your aircraft generally is actually very good. Yeah. So, so we go through each of those build stages. We do not need you to be up at our place. This whole process, if we do a build assist, probably about three months, roughly about three months. We do not expect you to be there for three months. 
but it's up to you how much time you've got available to come here and normally what we tell the guys is come for say a week two week periods because in that week or two week we do an intensive because it's not just you that will you it's three of my guys as well so we help you to accelerate a lot of those things yeah, yeah. which means you are the builder you know exactly what's going on there but we help you to achieve a much faster uh, end result <coughs> so so for argument so if you've got three months to spare you can spend three months you can absolutely you know so if you want to come and spend three months here and say well you know what i'm going to bring my caravan i'm going to i'm going to park on your back grass for three three months right. Um, as long as you bring me a nice bottle of wine <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and a nice vinyl record. Yeah. Then oh, we yeah, can chat. The right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so it just really depends on your time availability. I mean, because sometimes we can't be there. Yep. We have to be sometimes here to do some work here, which means you can carry on. If there's certain things that you can carry on with, you, you just carry on with it, you know. So mm. it's not that you, that, you know, you can't and cannot work without us. I mean, I can be without you. So you do this and this and this for today. I leave you, you can carry on because all the tools are there, um, all the space are there. And the other very, I think, the big, big, big plus with a bolt assist, because there's always two or three or four aircraft and even one or two kits here. Yeah. If you need one bolt or you need one spare part which is not in the box as a builder out there it can take a month to get that spare to you unfortunately it's just a fact because yeah. we get it from the factory when we get it here when it goes road freight and when it ends up with us it's a lot it's a lot difference because there's always the space you you, you are really very rarely you are stopped in your tracks yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a continuous process because we don't want to waste this time so yeah so once you've done the whole bolt we also keep a proper log of it. We've got a builder here now. I think you spoke to him. So Kate is <laughs> here now and Kate is busy with his week. Now the last time he was here he built flaps and ailerons. Today he's just finishing putting the, the wing tank on and he's also fitting the wing tips. Nice. So once he's built the, 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 the wings and, and the ailerons and the flaps, all of that stuff goes off to paint. Yeah. So we, we actually get things painted painted as we run over. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, 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 which also speeds up the process quite a bit, unless the wing and the fuselage is interacted in terms of the, the lines, but very rarely, very rarely that happens. So, so that's the whole process.